folks, it's Brian here today, and um, I'm working on that Tajima TMFX power supply again tonight. I needed a couple tools. So one of the things I needed, I needed some test leads. I couldn't find any of mine, so I, or, I bought some at Harbor Freight and I ordered some online, and, and that's good. So what I've done is I've got my bench power supply set to 0.01 amps, that's no current, and 2.9 volts, that's really low. This is a tracer current because I need to find stuff. Now, I have my Fluke 8050, but mm, it's misbehaving, so I don't trust it. I've got my cheap-ass uh, Harbor Freight multimeter here. It's like my $8 wonder. It's fine. I'm just using it to trace. And um, so let me show you what I got. So I've got three volts coming in here, and I've got it connected to this test point down here for the time being because I just want to identify some stuff. And I spent some time kind of analyzing this. I've got leads on what would be the hot and the neutral. Um, I need some more test equipment before I can really power this board up and test it. Um, and uh, so for right now, those are just test points. Um, I've determined that the white wire is connected to the blue wire, so that's neutral on the output plug that goes to the servo drivers. And then I've looked at this and I've concluded that we got five volts, minus five volts, 26 volts, and 12 volts. I have no idea what the heck's going on. Plus and minus five is a digital logic level. Um, 12 volts is running the computer, so I think those are my criticals. I don't know what the 26 volts is doing. Um, this is putting out 80 volts AC. That's got to be on the servo side. It's got to be servo drive, so that's fine. We don't need anything to do with that. Over here, what I think is going on is the power is coming in on these connectors, and basically this is the high voltage input, high voltage output. There's some varistors here. There are three fuses here, a fuse here, and a fuse here. All these fuses are good. There are, this looks like a typical half wave bridge rectifier setup. So it's coming in here. I've got some half wave bridge rectifiers down here. They just say RBV 1506, 3N, and I cannot see anything. I can't see under the bolt, and I don't feel like taking it off because I don't think that's what's bad. This board puts out everything but 12 volts. Um, and I've got, so I think this is rectifying to. Um, high voltage DC. I got a current transformer here. I don't know what, I, I don't quite get this. These are varistors, so they're just basically solid state circuit breakers. Um, they'll stop high voltage surges coming in. Um, they did go to the trouble to put shrink wrap on these. I didn't see that, so you have to test these on the ends. So if you want to test these, it needs to be down here on the contact. They've even got it isol the, the vertical parts isolated. I mean, they did a really nice job. Um, so, you know, I don't think the problem is over here. I think the problem is in here, and I think it's actually something minor. So I spent some time looking these up, and essentially what I would expect to find is 12 volts, 5 volts, 26 volts. And I don't know how they're producing the plus and minus five yet, but these are um, PCB mount current transformers. I don't know what they're stepping down from, probably 120 volts. Um, that's the most common configuration is 115 volts down to um, your target voltage. So that would mean that this is all related to the 80 volt uh, servos, and that would make sense because this would be your intermediate, which would produce an intermediate current. I have not tested that. I, I could, and they're marked SDG, so um, source drain gate is what that would stand for. And then over here, these are marked source drain gate, and then there's an A plus A. I don't know what that is. That's an S. 20 LC40. So let's stop and go see what that is.
Okay, so that is a super fast recovery rectifier. It should be rated at 40 amps, which is you know, quite, quite significant. And I'm gonna guess that these are more of the same down in here. Um, yeah, A plus A. So I think I'm right on the money. I think what we've got going on here is um, kind of an interesting design with a high voltage input and then these stabilize the voltage for these rectifiers. I, it just normally you would step this down to DC voltage and then peel your DC voltage off and step it down to what you need. At least that's how I would design it. And what these guys have chosen to do is this is a very modular looking design and it's almost like there's one product here, another product here, and then three more products kind of bonded here on the output side. And that these capacitors, um, stabilize the switching current. So what I would expect to find in here is three separate little bridge rectifiers on this end of the board stepping down from 115 or 220 volts because this is a dual voltage board stepping down to my target voltages of 26, 12, and plus and minus 5. And um, you know this isn't my specialty in electronics. I normally stay away from the high voltage stuff just because, you know, I don't have the equipment to really work on it. Um, so, my goal is to figure out where this circuit goes, because while they make great equipment, they're not willing to share 30-year-old um, schematics. And that's really unfortunate, because what that leaves is the people that own these embroidery machines like me that want to keep them running because they're just fantastically made machines, and they do beautiful work, we're at the mercy of pirates of the electronics repair industry who have figured out that this board is $1,800 because they just don't make them anymore. So these bastards charge $900 to repair this board, no matter if it's just this or if it's all of it that's bad. And that's just wrong. You know, I, I hope they burn in hell for that kind of stuff because, you know, that basically makes your machine junk. You know, who's going to put $2,000 into a machine that's worth five grand? Uh, yeah, not me. I mean, so anyway, and all this really is is a CNC sewing machine. I mean, that, that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we're talking about. And it's got an embedded an embedded processor in it that runs it. So we got to figure out how the voltage gets out of here. And it would be a whole lot easier to do this with a schematic because then I could just simply go test the stuff that's obvious and look for voltage. But we got to work backwards because we know where the 12 volts comes out, and we've got a test point and a diode. Diode 23 is our next stop in the journey, so I'm just going to start test at working backwards. Um, so before I get too much further, let me kind of lodge my little little light here. Ah, I really need a better workbench setup. Um, the digital side is chassis chassis grounded. Um, things that you just go, wow, really? Yeah, okay, that's one of them. So, any of these threaded objects is chassis ground. And let me just get some of this out of here. So, I'm going to go ahead and just verify that. And um, we'll go here. And then, I believe it's this one. Nope. I thought it was down here. So we're just kind of looking around for this pin that this 12 volts is on. And I've got this on a test point. So, oh, that one's, that one's coded. Yeah, I need to get excess test leads out of the way here. There we go. Now we're beginning to look like we cook with gas. All right, so I got three bolts there. So the next project is to get a bond on this somewhere. And I think the answer is down here. Uh, yeah, that looks really good right there. That's a screw hole. So let's again make sure we've got a good bond and we're just gonna stick that in there. 
Yeah, three volts. So now let's find a permanent home for this. Yeah, that looks like a good spot, but not really. There we go. So now what we're going to do is just kind of trace back to see where the voltage comes from. So we've got three volts on that side and nothing on that side. That makes me wonder. I'll be right back. All right, again, I don't normally work on this stuff, so what I wanted to see is, all right, if I've got no voltage there and, 20, and three volts there, this is my output diode down here and its direction is that way. So what we need to do is move this over to there. Yeah, not that one. All right. didn't like that. Oh, I'm going across too. So that is shorting out my diode. Let me reconfigure here. So what I'm doing is I'm rigging up a test probe to get in there. And I don't have quite the assortment of alligator clips, or as the Brits like to call them, crocodile clips, to get in where exactly I want to go. So I'm rigging something up. And what we're going to do is this has a little feeler on it, and we're going to just get in here and clip that in. Okay, so now, let's see if we've got voltage coming across there. Oh, we're shorted again. That's interesting. So, upstream of this, I have three volts, and downstream, uh, upstream, downstream of it, I can inject three volts just fine, but upstream of it, I get nowhere. And I do mean nowhere, like my power supply shuts down. happening is this light's turning orange telling me I have a fault. So let's disconnect this and let's give it a little bit more current. All right, so I'm going to give it 12 volts and just and see what happens. Yeah, I see a spark. That's what's happening. And I should not be seeing a spark. Yeah, and that doesn't surprise me because I'm, I'm putting current in the back side of this and it really shouldn't. It's not the right way to do it. So let's flip it around and see if we can figure out where this comes from. And to do this, we need another clip and we'll go back to this test point. 
And what we're going to do here is we're gonna measure that. And then we're going to poke around and see if we can find where 12 volts goes in. So we know that the transformers are feeding out and it's one of these. Not that one. What's well, really bizarre Not that one. And this isn't really the best way to test this. It's just an efficient way to figure out where I'm at. Nope, not that one. Oh, I had some voltage there. I'm going to drop that down. I'm dropping back down to 3 volts. Alright, so this circuit, yeah, I don't really have anything to point with it. This will work. Really. Um, so this circuit traces back to this capacitor here. So when I put 3 volts in, I get 3 volts out. So I know that downstream of this capacitor is good. So now i got to figure out where that capacitor gets its feed from. And unfortunately, I've got like a three or four layer board, which makes this really difficult. Oh, and we fell out. I hate it when we fall out.
Okay. I just want to put a little mark on the board to indicate which one is my input. I'm using a dry erase marker so it's real easy to reverse that. Tracing it the same way. You have three volts there. So now the question is where do we go from here? I think. spot. I think it goes down to one of these bridge rectifiers. So let's see if we can find it. And I think the capacitor is fed from one of these rectifiers. So, this side gives me some voltage. So I'm going to give it 5 volts. getting point o2 out and this one is linked over here we don't want to have Thank you. 
So, let me go do some research, because I think this is kind of where we're at. Alright, so we know that this is, this fuse is involved. So... Got a transformer that's loose down here, but I don't see I don't see that doing anything wrong, so I'm gonna leave it alone. The transformer that seems to be involved is this one here, which is this. You know, let's just double check the traces. Actually, it goes up to this top one. And it looks like it's the second trace. So, we need to know where these go. It doesn't make sense to me. some little teeny tiny diodes down here. So, we want to do a little continuity testing now that we have a better idea how the, um, now that we have a better idea how these transformers are hooked up.
so this transformer here is fed by whatever's in the middle one. Unfortunately, I can't see what this is. The MOSFET. Yep, SDG. Alright, so back to square one. I need to do a little bit more. So I'm going to reattach to my test point. Because what I'm looking for is output voltage. And then I'm going to plug my test lead in here. Alright, that gives me my chassis ground. And then that's not what I'm interested in. And then I'm going to put this on the positive lead. So what I'm doing is just measuring output voltage. Okay. Back to voltage. All right. Okay, so that's my three volts coming out, and that's where we kind of lose things. So I apply three volts to this capacitor, I get three volts out. If I apply voltage to the output of my MOSFET, which drives this capacitor, I get nothing. Nothing. So this is suspicious because the output of this pulls 0.23 amps and it drain it it's I mean two volts here but it's killing my uh, um, power supply so what we need to do is figure out where this goes so we're gonna go back to continuity Let's see if we can make this easier. So I'm right, that is the circuit.
Alright, so it's this transformer. This transformer is fed off of this fuse, so let's pull this out and test it again just to make sure it's good. Yep, that, that transformer is good. And where is this going?
So this is apparently the voltage regulator. It's controlling the gate on this, which runs this transformer, which powers this rectifier and MOSFET, which drives the 12 volt circuit. So, could have an issue here, here, or here.